I know I talk a lot about Aquarians these days, but our dear Piscean friends should never be left behind. You will be facing a lot of things that you probably never even thought about before. Remember I always tell you that Pisces go through at least one big change in their life because of which their personality can actually turn 180 degrees. It's like becoming the monk who sold his Ferrari. The timing is usually not confirmed for this event and it can happen at literally any given time, sometimes without a notice. So it's kind of a wild card. But the next 5 to 7 years of your life will be bringing a series of events that could possibly trigger a variety of changes in your life. And all this will be thanks to Rahu, Ketu and Saturn, the three malefics of our system. So how is it all going to work out? Let's figure it all out today on Bhagyashri. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Holistic Astrology podcast from Bhagyashri Holistic Astrology. Today we are discussing Pisces and their fortunes between 2023 and 2029. During the 7 year period you will be under the maximum influence of Rahu, Ketu and Saturn. You already know that these three are considered malefic planets according to Vedic astrology and in India people are actually really scared of them. But don't worry, it's not like your life is going to tumble down and the whole world is going to come crashing down on you. Of course, there will be challenges and if you are firmly grounded, things will not be as bad as you imagine. In 2023, the first phase of your Sare Sati began. The second phase will begin in 2025 and the third phase will begin in 2027. During the 7 and a half years, your life will be managed by Saturn. So don't forget to check out how Saturn is placed in your chart and how it actually behaves in your life. Now some people who are not aware of Vedic astrology as such may not be knowing what a Sade Sati is. Well Sade Sati is a very popular astrological term in India and everybody is scared of Sade Sati. It's a very special phenomena that occurs when Saturn is 12th from your moon and it ends when Saturn goes to the third sign from your moon. So if you are a Pisces moon, whenever Saturn enters Aquarius, that is 12th from your moon, your Sade Sati will begin. And whenever Saturn enters Taurus, that is the third from your moon, then your Sade Sati will end. Okay? So this is a 7 and a half period because Saturn spends 2 and a half years in every sign. So uh phase number 1 Saturn is in Aquarius 2 and a half years phase number 2 Saturn is in Pisces again 2 and a half years that is 5 years in total and then phase number 3 when Saturn is in Aries so a total of 7 and a half years people are really scared of Sade Sati it brings a lot of karmic challenges into your life and it occurs once every 28 to 30 years so of course Saturn is going to have a big impact on your life But is Sade Sati actually that bad? Is Sade Sati something that really uh, screws your life? Nothing like it actually. Sade Sati can be very challenging and your past karma can definitely come in front of you, ask for restitution, retribution, whatever you may call it. But if you manage it well, Sade Sati can actually be the most fruitful time in your life. So don't be scared. But yes, will there be challenges? Certainly. So be prepared for that. Now Sade Sati for Pisces is really interesting because for other signs Sade Sati may mean turbulent time Sade Sati may mean that okay Saturn is not really feeling like it but for Pisces Sade Sati is really unique this is because the last two signs of the zodiac and the first sign of the zodiac are involved in the Piscean Sade Sati so of course there is Aquarius which starts your Sade Sati Aquarius is the Mooltrakorn sign of Saturn. If you're not aware of the term Mooltrakorn, it simply means a position where a planet it is considered to be at home. So imagine you being at your home, you're like supremely comfortable, you don't really care about the world and you are authentically you. So you're not working to another's dictates. Right? So that is a Mooltrakorn sign and every 
planet will have a multrikon sign or multrikon degrees in a particular sign so um with aquarius saturn is always in its multrikon sign so saturn of course is very powerful when the first phase of your sade sati begins with saturn in aquarius then the most intense phase starts when saturn is actually going through your uh, or going over your natal moon so that is a very intense phase but this intense phase occurs when saturn is also in the last leg of the zodiac right and then finally your sade sati its last phase will occur in aries now for most other signs it doesn't mean anything at all um it doesn't uh, really reflect a lot of challenges it might even mean that you know you're spared good luck go and do stuff as you like it but for pisces the third phase of the sade sati means the beginning of the zodiac which means that it's going to be the most interesting sade sati of them all so i think two signs have the most interesting sade satis the first is aquarius of course because the end of your sade sati is literally the end of the zodiac and secondly it's pisces because the end of your sade sati is the beginning of the zodiac so everything is topsy turvy when it comes to pisces and you can always see the sign of pisces two fish moving together but in opposite directions so this is what pisces is all about it's there it's nice but it's so contradictory right so as i told you aquarius gives a lot of power to saturn so obviously the first phase of the sade sati becomes very powerful very intense your first phase began in the beginning of 2023 when saturn entered the sign of aquarius so of course for piscean folks it means a lot of losses mostly for you the losses have been in terms of health because saturn is in your 12th house so you now want to isolate yourself from the world or maybe you want to control how you interact with the world you're not really about you know going out there and being with people all the time maybe you want to tell your own story maybe you want to share things with the world but not in the way the world wants you to on the other hand some people might even feel like they want to isolate themselves altogether health generally is not that fine for pisians when saturn is in the 12th house um so yes there are a lot of financial troubles there are health issues as well it's not like you're losing out on everything it's not like you're going bankrupt but yeah things are really tight at the moment so of course this is happening for you then the second phase the most intense phase of the sade sati will begin when saturn moves into the sign of pisces that is your sign now the intensity is going to only improve saturn when it comes to pisces wants to wrap things up okay it's in the mood to wrap things up Of course, Saturn is not going to wrap up anything at all on its own. It's going to make you wrap a lot of things on his behalf. So you may see closure from relationships from your past. You may see uh, to end things and finally cut ties to things that are not serving you anymore. More importantly, it is possible that you never really look back ever again. So maybe if you are going in the right direction, uh, you figured out during the first phase of your sade sati that. your health is not right and that you need to stop eating junk food maybe you need to stop you know cut down on your soda cut down on your sugar maybe you need to start uh, doing some fancy diet or maybe you not need to start intuitive eating something along those lines so you feel like you need to cut your ties with something that you held so dearly uh, in your life so now if you understood that phase the second phase actually it becomes intense but it helps you out but if you don't understand what happens is uh, you realize that your health has been wrong or maybe you realize that you've been wasting a lot of money but you don't do anything about it and saturn is here to judge saturn judges and saturn is like okay go to hell now you're not listening to me you can totally go to hell nobody really cares about you and you have to learn your lessons the hard way now right so that's what saturn does in the second and more important phase of your sade sati now remember when i am talking about seeking closure i don't mean that you have to re-enter the life of an old lover just to ask them uncomfortable questions about why they left you there is no shortage of people who think that they can take advantage of astrological positions to get whatever they want and i have seen plenty like that making mistakes and saying that they did it because of a mercury retrograde not doing their work on time suggesting that they have been feeling lethargic simply because mars went retrograde or maybe backtracking on a relationship 
sometimes even cheating on their partners saying that oh you know venus was not in the right position and i did a lot of wrong things and i have seen plenty of people like that i don't want you to be like that because this is really selfish behavior and sometimes it's it's even narcissistic the planets do create a lot of situations for you they create a lot of possibilities for you but you still have some agency and if you really see closure a majority of the work needs to be done by you and not the other person the, the change in attitude that you feel is actually what's going to lead to closure it's not always possible to get answers how will you get answers from people who are dead how does that work out if you want to see closure for somebody who's who's dead the only way to work it out is to cut your ties with whatever you've been holding on for so long so maybe this maybe you know somebody hurt you a lot maybe it was your parents maybe your grandparents somebody who hurt you a lot who's no more in this world how are you going to see closure then you're going to cut your ties with whatever hurt you've been holding on in your heart for so long and trust me this works If you're smart enough, if you understand the science of the universe, if you understand how the world functions, if you understand how the planets are moving, you probably already started doing all the things I mentioned when Saturn started in Aquarius. That is in 2023. So if you've started noticing some real changes in your outlook, in the way you live, in the way you eat, in the way you interact with the world, it's probably because of the movement of Saturn. and what it is trying to tell you in terms of you know seeking closure cutting ties and you know just getting rid of everything that has been holding you back for so long and uh, with pisces actually this is a problem because they they find it very difficult to get rid of things right so they are not like cancerians who are going to hold on to something dear even if it hurts they're not like scorpions who are going to hold on and you know consciously do that holding on so that they can get back to you scorpions do that a lot pisces are like they try to sweep it all under the rug hoping that it will go away and it never does so it keeps hurting them but on the surface they keep pretending that you know everything is all right so they are very typical when it comes to you know the submissive partner in a relationship who's feeling stifled by their more aggressive or dominant partner they may feel like things are not right uh they may feel like their voice is not getting heard but eventually they keep quiet because they want to maintain the peace or they want to maintain the status quo so uh, during this time when sare sati has activated especially as it as it grows more intense you will feel as if time is slipping away and whoever you were 10 12 maybe 20 years ago you are not the same person anymore these changes will be felt by the entire population at large but it will be very intense for you so the changes that pisces will go through will be a lot more intense as compared to the changes that let's say a taurian or a cancerian or a virgo you know person goes through so for you it will be specifically intense now finally in 2027 the last phase of your sare sati will begin for other signs it may be a time for relief but not for pisces you people have to go through yet another turbulent period but why simple i told you this before saturn when it enters the sign of aries is actually starting a new cycle for you this means that saturn will be redoing things so in aquarius saturn for you specifically was making you lose things in pisces for uh, you, for you specifically saturn was like cut your ties get rid of this baggage you know you you are changing you know you are changing at a cellular level you know that so get ready for this and now saturn is busy redoing things refreshing the ledger and carrying over whatever is left undone so saturn never forgets okay saturn always carries the balance over so here too you need to be very patient and you have to focus on providing yourself that refreshing new perspective that can help you um, do better in life so whatever broke down between 2023 and 2027 when finally start building a fresh during this last phase now that we know how saturn is going to affect pisces this is the right time to know how rahu and ketu will affect pisces in the immediate future now remember saturn always does very very slow work so saturn is not about 
making things happen suddenly. Saturn doesn't ever give you sudden fame. It's the job of Rahu. Rahu wants to do things suddenly, right? And Rahu in its impact is generally intense. Rahu and Ketu are called North Node and South Node in the Western system. Uh, there too, they are shadow planets. They don't have any mass and simply they become eclipse points where the sun and moon are eclipsed. But yes, the impact of these two planets can be very powerful. Now, these two Vedic planets are forever retrograde. They never start from Aries to Taurus. Instead, if you place them at zero degree of Aries, they will start moving towards Pisces instead of Taurus. This means that Rahu's new cycle will never begin in Aries. Its cycle will always end in Aries. Its new cycle actually begins from Pisces. And, uh, you know, subsequently, the new cycle of Ketu, which is always 180 degree apart from Rahu or 180 degree away from Rahu or seven houses away from Rahu, Ketu's uh, new cycles actually begin from Virgo. So right now, Rahu and Ketu are placed in Aries and Libra. And like other planets, they are not really starting things in Aries. They are ending them. So they too are busy with their balance sheets and closing their accounts. The moment they enter Pisces, they will start a new cycle. And this is happening very soon. Rahu will be in Pisces on October 30th and Ketu will be in Virgo on the same date. And remember, Rahu is not like Shani. I mean, in Vedic system, um, Rahu is called Shani Vat Rahu, that is a planet that acts like Saturn, but this is not a regular Saturn. This is a delinquent um, Saturn. So, of course, you know, this planet is not willing to do things as Saturn does. So when Rahu is actually, you know, closing off uh, the year, you know, finishing its balance sheets, Rahu doesn't really want to carry anything forward. It wants to end everything right where it is. And when it starts afresh, it just starts afresh. Okay, it always wants a clean slate to work on. And by that, it could also mean that Rahu might deliberately and sometimes abruptly end things just because it wants to start a new 18 year cycle across the zodiac. So Rahu remains in one sign for 18 months. And of course, when I'm talking about Rahu, I'm also talking about Ketu. You have to know two important things about Rahu and Ketu. Rahu is a planet that has explosive properties. So whatever Rahu touches, Rahu would want to explode the properties of that particular planet. So when Rahu is coming into contact with, let's say, Mars, Rahu will actually explode the qualities of Mars. It will start acting like a second Mars. Similarly, when Rahu comes to Pisces, Rahu will acquire the properties of Jupiter, the owner of Pisces, which means that it will act like a second or a, let's say, uh, artificial Jupiter there. And it will try to act like Jupiter. It will try to teach you new things. So it's not really teaching you the right things because it's obviously not a guru, but it's trying to teach you things in the guise of, of priesthood. It's like that. So it's trying to teach you new stuff, something that you have never heard, something that's not part of your tradition, something that's completely new. It doesn't really have to be bad at all times, but yes, it could be new like crazy. And Ketu, on the other hand, is called Mangalvat Ketu. That is a planet that is actually like Mars. So Mars is known for being very straightforward, a planet that wants to go ahead and, you know, do some sort of action. But Ketu is nothing like Rahu, uh, let's say, nothing like Rahu, nothing like Mars. Ketu just doesn't want to act. Ketu wants to uh, go for Moksha and Nirvana and Turiyavastha. So it's interested in those things. And Ketu, wherever it goes, it doesn't want to talk about those things. It doesn't want to reflect on these things. It's simply not interested. So that is the push and pull effect of Rahu and Ketu um, that we that we always talk about. And that is the effect that we actually need to focus on. Because here right now, it's not Ketu that is in Pisces. Okay, If Ketu was in Pisces, then maybe Pisces would have become a little more isolated, willing to focus on Moksha and Nirvana, not really willing to engage with the world. But since it's Rahu, you're not engaging with the world as the world wants, as I told you before. You want to engage with the world in a way that you want. So you're more into uh, monologues instead of dialogues. You want to tell them something, but you want to control that information as much as possible. So 
this is rahu going into pisces so rahu will act like an artificial jupiter and it will explode or expand the qualities of pisces and jupiter like crazy so of course there will be some issues because eventually it is you know artificial so it's like you know having a real rose versus having a rose made of foam or plastic so it's it looks like a rose but it doesn't smell like a rose it does not have all the properties of a rose and interestingly a rose may fade away it may wither but the plastic rose or the foam rose will stay there forever similarly the effects of jupiter will come and go but the effects of rahu once they are like imprinted on your brain they are there forever and remember that rahu is coming into your first house if you are a pisces ascendant or a pisces moon uh, we will always take pisces as your first house which means that rahu will be entering your first house which means that it will play a lot with your self image how you look at yourself and the way you want to look at the world i want you to notice something really important so rahu is actually moving backwards right so first it will encounter pisces then aquarius then capricorn and then sagittarius and it will spend 18 months in each of these signs and these four signs the last four signs of the zodiac are controlled by just two planets jupiter and saturn so in the next 18 months um rahu will want to act a lot like jupiter right it will be like an artificial jupiter an overpowered artificial jupiter then for next 36 months it will be all about acting like saturn and then finally for the last 18 months it will be all about becoming jupiter again so there is a lot of push and pull because um in reality or maybe at the conceptual level saturn is a planet that condenses okay it's not a planet that wants to go out and throw its energies to the wall it wants to condense it wants to uh, you know focus and concentrate on a few things but Jupiter is the exact opposite it wants to expand so you know f- uh, for the next uh, uh, 18 plus 36 plus 18 months things are going to be rather topsy turvy they're going to go ahead and come back go ahead and come back because rahu is going to function like that and you will specifically be affected because of it because you're a pisces and because uh, you know these four houses are going to be very important for you because uh, again pisces will be your first house so it talks about the kind of self image you have when rahu comes here your self image will be all about you yourself and nothing more than that rahu will be desperate to make changes okay it will be like do this learn this thing you have to do this there is no other way there will be a lot of pressures coming in from rahu it will force you to make changes it will ask you to follow your impulses it will ask you to do a lot of things and maybe make you a lot more self centered but then there is ketu in the 7th house the house of relationships so you might not really feel like engaging in your relationships anymore and that's not just about your partner it's also about um you know um other people in your life and it's really interesting that since i've started talking about ketu the dogs in the distant neighborhood feel like they need to bark right at this moment and i'll tell you exactly why this is a coincidence because ketu in india is connected to dogs Now I always used to get irritated but uh, these days I'm actually observing the world in a very different light and I notice that every time I'm mentioning Ketu in one way or the other every time I'm making a video every time I'm recording something related to uh, Ketu the dogs just have to make their presence felt in one way or another so these days I'm not as irritated um when i talk about saturn things are always delayed so if i have to make a podcast or let's say a video right now it will get delayed for some reason or another maybe by one hour maybe by half an hour maybe by one or two days but it always gets delayed and that's the same story with any buddy who has a very powerful saturn especially a retrograde and powerful saturn that whenever they come for a consultation something or the other happens and their consultation has to be rescheduled has to be delayed sometimes because of me and sometimes because of them so these are also very interesting things that you need to notice and i think you should notice them as as people who are into astrology and into understanding how this universe functions right 
so again as i said ketu will be in the seven so rahu will be all about me myself and i and ketu will be all about um you know don't really focus on relationships why do you even need one i mean right you have a boyfriend you have a girlfriend you have a significant other you have a wife or a husband who cares after that right they are at home you're doing your duties you're being a good husband you're being a good wife now just focus on yourself that's it so that's what ketu is all about in in the worst of circumstances it might make you move away from relationships it might make you extremely self centered that you're not even able to understand what the other person in your life wants or what their needs are or how they want to be looked at you will just be about yourself but that happens only in extreme circumstances it doesn't have to be for everybody so rahu is forcing you like that then for the next 36 months rahu will be in the science of saturn that is aquarius and capricorn so rahu will want to act a lot like saturn rahu uh, would want to you know focus extensively on uh, delaying things extensively on creating frustrations extensively on making you work extremely hard of this time uh, the time it spends in aquarius will be even more interesting because aquarius is connected to rahu eventually so rahu would be like okay this is my home i do whatever i feel like and that would be a rahu out of control so at that moment rahu will be in your 12th house rahu might make you go away from your workplace rahu might uh, make you go away from your hometown rahu might make you work with foreign individuals with foreign companies rahu might isolate you from the rest of the world so you might even feel like you want to become a monk and sell your ferrari eventually things might happen of that nature so foreign travel uh, working in foreign lands working with foreign companies or foreign people that all is indicated uh, during uh, rahu's transit in in now uh, Uh, in aquarius when rahu is at its own uh, place so you see what is happening right things are very strong where they are and this strength is actually what is creating turbulence in your life so overall consider it nothing more than turbulence only it won't necessarily be a bad time but will it be challenging most certainly so i will not like to sugar coat things here if you are a pisces ascendant or a pisces moon you will go through changes and many of them will be uncomfortable there will be times you will not understand what's going on in your life but you will have to learn to go with the flow as you always do get ready for a transformational exercise and if your life or the universe or the stars or the planet they align for you to grab an opportunity or they align for you to cut your ties with something or someone please take that opportunity please don't shy away and please don't allow your feelings and emotions and your attachments to work for you because eventually pisces is the sign of the 12th house and 12th house is not about attachments so you have to get rid of your attachments um it may feel like you're going through a portal in space you will not be the same person anymore so whoever you were till 2022 you will not be the same person uh, post 2027 and you will start noticing the changes uh, from 2023 on what it's like going through a portal actually so there will be changes uh, so you better keep your eyes open embrace those changes keep your feet firmly planted on the ground and learn to align yourself uh, you know with the planetary energies learn to align yourself with the universal energy so that you can understand what is going on and you are able to take the right steps and the right decisions for yourself and anyway if you have any issues you can always get in touch with me and i'll be able to help you out with that right so for now i'm surprised that the dogs have stopped they usually go on forever but since i have acknowledged them they have stopped barking this is amazing i should do it more often i think i should do it before i start recording any session whether video or audio so that they do not bark later on but whatever it is i'll i'll try to work with it meanwhile you take very good care of yourself and um, make sure you read the signs right read between the lines read the rooms just be happy and live a very good life thank you so much for being here with me good luck and goodbye